Oh, those birds, those birds, those wonderful birds, they fly through the trees, they flew and they chirp. Oh, those birds, those birds, those wonderful birds, they live near my home, they live in the woods. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to... Wait a second so that everybody has a chance to be seated. Can't bring any of the birds out until everybody's taken a seat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Milwaukee County Zoo and the Bird Show. I am sure that everyone recognizes this bird. This is Norbert, the bald eagle. And he is just one of the many birds you will have the chance to see today. Other animals, like bats and insects, can fly. But what do birds like Norbert have that they don't? Have you guys it covers his entire body. And if you think you know the answer, just go ahead and shout it out. Feathers! That's right! Feathers! Feathers allow birds to fly higher, farther, and faster than any other animal on Earth. Feathers have allowed birds to occupy every corner of the globe, from the scorching deserts to the frozen tundra. And today, along with the help of our birds like Norbert, trainers Erica, John, and I, you will learn more about feathers and the birds who wear them. During today's show, there will be many free flight demonstrations, where the birds like normal will fly directly over your heads. So for your safety as well as the birds, it's extremely important that you remain seated throughout the entire show. And please, don't try to touch the birds as they fly by. One last thing I feel I should mention, if you do choose to look up at our beautiful birds today, you might want to keep your mouths closed. Feathers have been on this planet for thousands of years. In 1861, one of the most revolutionary fossils ever discovered was revealed to the world because of a quarry man's nasty cough. This man paid his doctor's bill with a fossil he had found in a limestone quarry in Germany. This fossil turned out to be the famous Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx was the first feathered fossil, and it was a dinosaur. About half the size as Emerson here, our Eurasian eagle owl. Archaeopteryx had a mouth full of razor sharp teeth and had claws on the edges of his wings. As birds evolved into the modern flyers that we see today, they lost those heavy jaws and replaced those teeth with a lightweight beak. They also replaced the claws on the edges of their wings with talons on the tips of their toes. Emerson here, our Eurasian eagle owl, has a unique ability. He's a silent flyer. He has fringing on his feathers, like the teeth of a comb. This fringing cuts through the air, muffling any noise his wing beats make. Giving this guy a silent flight, which is a huge advantage when he's hunting. Emerson also has those beautiful orange eyes. They're teardrop shaped and they go all the way back into his head. They take up two thirds of the room in his skull. If our eyes were as large as Emerson's, they'd be the size of softballs. Because his eyes are so large, there's no room for connective muscles allowing him to turn his eyes from side to side, like you and I can. So in order to compensate for this, Emerson, as well as other owls, they have 14 vertebrae. That's twice as many as you and I have. These 14 vertebrae allow Emerson to turn his head 270 degrees. That's almost in a complete circle. Emerson also has those feather tufts. They use those for territorial displays. They help him camouflage. And they also tell us his mood. Well, how about a hand for Emerson, our silent liar? The feathers on modern birds, 
like Emerson, as well as ancient animals, such as Archaeopteryx, those feathers are composed of the same substance that makes up our hair and our nails. It's a protein called keratin. And speaking of protein, here come two tasty little nuggets. We like to call omelet and Casanova, our bantam coaching chickens. They have feathers that go all the way down to the tips of their toes. These feathers assist them when they're foraging for insects, and they also help keep them warm in the winter. Coaches are native to South Asia, but they're primarily kept as pets. Here in the U.S., people also keep them as pets, and we sometimes refer to them as fancy fowl because of those feathered feet that they have. Our next bird is also from Asia, as well as parts of Africa. He's nothing like those cute and fluffy cochins you all just saw. He's got a very unique taste in food. You wouldn't want to share dinner with this bird. I'd like you all to meet Diablo, the tawny eagle. In the wild, Diablo would look for a flock of vultures. Now, why would he look for a flock of vultures? He would look for these vultures so that he could frighten them. He would jump around, make a lot of noise. That's because when vultures are frightened, they throw up everything they have eaten. And if you folks thought it was really gross going down, it's even worse coming back up. Diablo then approaches that hot mess and he eats it. It's his favorite meal. One of the things I really enjoy about birds is the great variety to their appearances, their lifestyles, and even their intelligence. Here at the zoo, you can see some extremely large birds like the rias and the emus. There are then very small birds like the bee hummingbird. They lay eggs smaller than the size of a pea. A little bit earlier, I mentioned that Emerson's eyes take up two-thirds of the room in his head. Now, if you folks were to do the math, that only leaves one-third of the room for something really important, like a brain. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but owls are not the brightest feather on the bird. They are, however, very good at hunting. This little guy, however, is extremely intelligent. He's a member of one of the smartest bird species in the world. I'd like you all to meet my little feathered friend. Can you share your name? Nemo. Nemo is an African gray parrot from the jungles of the Congo. Well, Nemo, I don't know about you, but I think it's a little bit tired. Nemo, Nemo. 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 they're sleepy? Oh, what a nice big yawn. I think you should help wake them up. Can you do the rooster? Uh -huh. Now that you folks are a little more awake, Nemo and I are going to share a story with you all. What do you think, Nemo? You all set? Okay. Once upon a time, in a galaxy far, far away, there lived a bird. Did you know his name? Nemo. That's right, it was Nemo. <laughs> Nemo Skytalker. Nemo Skytalker lived on a planet completely covered in water. <laughs> One day, Nemo Skytalker received transmission from a princess. This princess, was she pretty? Yeah. She had long brown hair, blue eyes. She looked a lot like me. Oh, she must have been. And hair. This princess had been kidnapped by the evil Vulture Vader. Nemo Skytalker knew he was her only hope, so he chased after that evil vulture vader. <laughs> he climbed into a spaceship called the Big Wings, and he flew up to Vulture Vader's space station with a nice loud charge. <laughs> when Nemo Skytalker got there, the doors were locked, so he had to knock. <laughs> when the Vulture Vader opened up the doors, Nemo Skytalker stunned him with his laser. Pew, pew! <laughs> 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 the princess. She was so grateful that 
you gave me most sky talker a big kiss. <laughs> and they flew off into the sunset. Ready? <laughs> Besides telling stories, Nemo hears things that he's unique in other ways too. Nemo, what makes you so special? I can talk to you, Paul. Well, I can talk, but I cannot fly. You have us all beat. Nemo, can you give all these folks a nice big wave goodbye? How about a hand for Nemo? many of you today. He is quite the new character. But before you all run out and buy your own parrots, there are a few things you should know. One is that a bird like Nemo can live to be very old. Nemo can live to be 70 years old. Other parrot species can live to be over 100. They need a lot of attention and can be quite destructive. In general, they don't make the best pets for most of families. Sometimes people ask what the difference is between a parrot and a cop. Well, there aren't too many differences, and here to help show us, we have Rio. Rio is a red and green macaw. As you can see, she's quite a bit larger than Nemo. Red and green macaws are the second largest parrot in the world. She also has a big, big beak that she uses to practice Darker. 
if you were to see a red-tailed hawk in the wild with a brown tail and light-colored eyes, we would call her Juno. Well, Wagner does a fantastic job illustrating three characteristics of a bird of prey. The first is that large curved upper beak. Oh, they use that as a knife and fork. Looks like tear apart their prey into bite-sized pieces. The second is their eyesight. Wagner's eyesight is about 10 to 15 times better than yours and mine. human male. Once he grabs a hold of it, his food, it's not going anywhere. With all this warm weather, I am sure that many of you are wondering how it is that birds stay cool. Well, there are several different ways in which birds can dissipate heat. One way is by lifting up all their covert or body feathers, and allowing cool air to circulate against their skin. They also pant, and mantle. That's when they hold their wings out, again, allowing that cool air to circulate. Well, here we have Bat Rouge, the king vulture. He has a very unique way of staying cool. You guys take a look at his legs there and see that they are a nice white color. When Bat Rouge is hot, he employs a method called urohydrosis. That simply means that in order to cool himself down, he poops on his legs. So that white color that you're seeing, it's not natural and it's not a tan. As you can see, Baton Rouge has no feathers on his head. That's to help him when he puts his head inside a carcass, it won't get quite as dirty. Vultures have relatively weak feet but very strong beaks. And as the name suggests, Baton Rouge, the king vulture, he's on the top of the food chain. When these birds break into a carcass, it allows other vultures with smaller, more specialized beaks to be able to come in and eat as well. Vultures, like Baton Rouge, the king vulture, are unique because they were worshipped by the Aztecs. The Aztecs believed that king vultures were messengers to the gods. In addition to neural hydrosis and mantling, another way in which feathers can be used to cool themselves, to cool a bird off, has to do with their color. Our next bird is from Africa, but his feathers have a different use. I'm sure that many of you have heard about the Titanic, the big ship that sank in 1912. The most expensive piece of cargo that sank to the bottom of the ocean, it wasn't a car, and it wasn't jewelry. It was 40 cases of ostrich feathers. Birds like ostriches, egrets, and storks, like Otis here, our white-bellied stork, were historically hunted so their feathers could be used in women's hats. One ounce of egret feathers was worth today's equivalent of $2,000. Unfortunately, these birds really didn't have a chance. Luckily, with conservation and new laws put in place, these birds became more protected. Otis is from Africa, and there he is thought to bring good luck. He migrates a few days before the rainy season. So when farmers see these birds appear, they know that the rains will soon be there. If you'd like to see more white-billed storks like Otis, you can at the aviary. There are over a dozen of them on display. Our next bird uses her dark and light feathers to help her keep cool. In her native Africa, she has a white stripe and a white belly. These white feathers help reflect the light, keeping her cool. She's also an extremely intelligent bird, and as part of the behavior I think you all will enjoy. You might recognize her. She looks very similar to a species of bird that we have here in the U.S. If I could get my volunteers that were chosen at the beginning of the show to stand up and hold those bottles like they were shown, I'd like to bring out Einstein, the African pie crow. Einstein is going to take a look around and she's going to show us how to recycle. Alright Einstein, do you see that it needs to be recycled? 
you folks might be able to take a step forward, but it'll help her see you a little bit better. Her eyesight is movement based. Oh, looks like she saw. Not quite. She did see something for a second. Okay, Einstein, do you see anything that needs to get recycled? What do you think? Yeah. Looks like she does. She sees a plastic bottle. Oh, she knows that bottle. It doesn't belong in the landfill. So what's she going to do with it? She's going to pl place it in the recycling bin. Good job, Einstein. Okay, Einstein, you see anything else? So you're going to take one more stop. Do you see anything, Einstein? Looks like she does. She's found another plastic bottle. Well, once again, she's going to take that bottle and put it in the recycling bin. Come in for Einstein for volunteers. Now, if Einstein who is a bird can recycle, I know that all of you out there are more than capable of doing that same thing. Einstein was an African high pro. As you all saw, she was black and white. Well, we're going to bring back a famous American pie bird. I'm sure you guys will recognize him. He's got a white head and a white tail, brown body. We are going to bring back Norbert, the bald eagle. Bald eagles don't get that white head until they are five years old. Before that, they are completely brown. Norbert here is seven. He belongs to the sea eagle family. He's got those great big feet and sharp talons to help him catch fish. Gold eagles also have another unique adaptation. Their feathers are covered in thousands of microscopic barbs. These barbs trap air, creating small air pockets, so that when a bird like Norbert dives in the water after a fish, he doesn't get quite as wet. Bald eagles also build some of the largest <coughs> nests of any bird in North America. The biggest nest on record was built in Florida. A pair of bald eagles have been returning to the same nest for over 10 years, adding more and more sticks and branches. The nest became so heavy that it actually broke the tree it had been built in and it ended up weighing over three tons. But for many of us, birds like Norma represent wilderness and freedom. But it's important to remember that birds are not free from many of the ugly decisions that we make in our lives. Which means that recycling, as we saw demonstrated, as well as conserving water and energy, is extremely important. So the birds are around for us to enjoy for years to come. At the end of today's show, if you folks would like to get a closer look at Norbert, ask any questions, or take some pictures, please feel free to come on up. And if you would like to make a contribution to organizations that support conservation, like the Milwaukee County Zoo or the World Bird Sanctuary, you can with the help of our final bird, Einstein. She's the bird that did the recycling. You can walk right on up to her, and she'll be more than happy to take any contributions you may have right out of your hands and place them into her donation box. Well, we hope you folks have enjoyed our show today and enjoy the rest of your visit.